Hello and welcome. We are in conversation today with Dr. Jyoti Ghosh, Professor of Economics at Jawaharlal Nehru University, and we are going to be talking about the state of the Indian economy. Jyoti, in the current context of the global recession, where do you think the Indian economy is standing today? How bad is it or how not bad is it? Well, it's definitely bad. It is certainly worse than the government has made it out to be. It's true that it is not yet as bad as a number of other countries in Asia where exports have collapsed completely, manufacturing production is down by 20%. Ours is down as well. Our exports are down as well. We do have some other areas of resilience, mainly because we haven't got such a large share of trade in our GDP. And you think this, uh, some part of the mm -hmm. strength or ability to uh, survive in this mm -hmm. crisis is because of some residual strengths in the domestic economy? Yes, absolutely. The fact that we still have a very large public sector that can be used to reflate the economy, both in banking and in manufacturing. The fact that a significant part of our economy can still depend on the domestic market and we can try and provide more fiscal stimuli for the domestic market. All of these are points in our favor. Some commentators seem to be suggesting that uh, we haven't yet seen the worst effects in I India. I think that's and absolutely that true. There may be a lag before we start feeling the worst of. Well, it's not so much that there may be a lag. I think it's underway, but it is a downswing. So the downturn is continuing and it will definitely get worse before it gets better. Before it gets better. And when do you think it's going to get better? Well, you know, I don't, I'm not in the <laughs> business of crystal ball grazing, but I do believe that we are in for a very bad year. But I think we have to remember that, you see, what is interesting about the Indian case, uh, the finance minister has been saying that we're still among the best performing economies in the world and so on. But what's interesting is that, you see, both our previous boom and the current slowdown are a reflection of our global integration. Right. We got the boom essentially because we also deregulated finance. We made ourselves try, we tried to look attractive to international capital and we got discovered. So the big boom we had after 2003 really is when the growth rate really accelerated. That boom is a reflection of the large amount of essentially very hot money that was flowing in, which made, as because India was an attractive destination, which provided a lot of liquidity, allowed the domestic banking se sector also to create a credit-fueled boom. Right. So we had a huge boom in consumption credit, a lot of consumer durables, a lot of real estate, construction, all of this was fed by this whole integration process, really. That boom was going to come to an end, even internally. Quite. We were having our own speculative bubble. That speculative bubble had already started coming to an end. By the middle of 2008, we were slowing down already. And uh, in fact, by early 2008. And of course, the global crisis, when it hit us, then we got a double whammy. We were hit from both sides, in a sense. So how do you think the government is responding to this present uh, stage at which India yeah. is and uh, how do you think that that's going to go? When we've had this boom, there's been a lot of talk about how Indian economy has been doing so well. But the critical point is that even during the boom, the majority of our population was not better off. We've had an economy growing at 9%, but agricultural incomes falling and workers' wages coming down, which right. is unbelievable actually. Workers' real incomes have been falling especially in the informal sector, and in agriculture, peasants are continuing to be hit. Right. So even during the boom, it's not as if everyone in the economy no. was better off. The problem is that now that we have the downswing, it's these same sectors which are once again hit. Okay, farmers are very badly hit by this massive decline in cash crop prices, and workers are obviously being hit because there is job loss and there is a decline in real wages. So has government been addressing this issue more in terms of the financial sector or has the government also been looking at uh, what can be done in job creation uh, Well, you know, sectors? I think the government response has been very disappointing. It's really been inadequate, I would say, on both fronts. In the financial sector, we have nationalized banks who should be told now to provide credit where it's needed most. That is, they should be told immediately start lending much more to agriculture than they are at present, immediately spend on small-scale enterprises, immediately ensure that we have some credit access for the informal sector, which is where most of the employment is. Right. We can do that because we, the public sector owns these banks. Right. It hasn't happened. 
Okay. We have been focusing on bailing out the private sector banks who have been irresponsible. Exactly. Yeah. And the private sector banks who have been irresponsible continue to yes. whatever bailout money is there, sit on the money. Sit on the money than, rather than lend it out. Uh, lend it out. And you know, just lowering interest rates doesn't help when people cannot access the loan. Right. So this whole idea that all you have to do is just keep lowering interest rates and things will get better, that's also, it's not going to, it's work. Not going to work. So what do you think the government should be doing? Well, then? that's the point. It must spend. In other words, you have to have fiscal stimuli. Everybody in the world knows this now. The trouble is that the Indian government has a very small fiscal stimulus. And even that is, again, mostly subsidies to the big guys. It's tax cuts. It is subsidies to large corporations. It is not in terms of direct spending. What it should be doing is it should, first of all, significantly increase resource flow to the state governments. Not just allow them to borrow more, but give them more plan funds. Right. Okay? Because they are the ones who are responsible for health, education, infrastructure, all the essential things that affect the quality of life. So state governments who are in very bad shape at the moment, they should be getting lots more money. Okay? Secondly, there should be a big increase in the employment program. We should just universalize it, start it in urban areas, extend it to every adult, put lots more money in there. Because there is, in fact, a huge problem now of unemployment right. and inadequate wage incomes in the countryside. And that's a, an automatic buffer. It's a really good stabilizer of incomes. It provides rural demand. It increases rural industrialization. It does all kinds of good things. Right. But uh, the government, particularly in the last decade and a half, uh, in India has been following a trajectory of mm. policies which uh, would not allow them in that sense to do what you are suggesting. That's been the story the last yes. 10 or 15 years. Yes, so you're do absolutely you really right. see the government now in a crisis responding differently or are we going to see more of the same? You know, I think it's interesting what you say that yes, governments regardless of their original political, they have the central government has operated in a certain way which pushes a neoliberal economic framework. I think, however, politics does make a difference. I think the 2004 elections did make a difference because the UPA government and the National Common Minimum Program, they were good. They actually did for some change of direction. There was more money spent on the rural areas. There was more credit to agriculture. We did have a National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. There were certainly some positive changes which were forced by politics. Right. Again, we're in a situation now where politics, I do believe, will force some change. And I do hope it's for the pro in a progressive direction because the economic reality is of worsening material conditions for most people and a government that is not meeting the minimum requirements to make things better. Right. And to what extent do you think steps over the next year or two years uh, which India takes or needs to take is going to be linked to potential revival in the global economy or is it going to be despite uh, the problems in the global uh, economy? You know, globally there's a downturn and yes. it, this is a downturn that could be quite prolonged be right. depending on how different governments respond. Sure. But I think we have to also recognize that this is going to be a phase, a global phase of much more inward looking economic growth. So that there's going to be protectionism in the US, there is likely to be much more protectionism even in Europe. There is certainly going to be a tendency for economies to sort of hunker down and try and solve their own problems. Now, this is likely to make global problems worse. Yes. Within that context, though, I do believe it gives countries like India, developing countries like India, a chance to push for our own autonomous development trajectory, which we have discarded. Right. We didn't do a wage-based, domestic market-based growth. Let's try that now, because now the global right. situation is forcing us to look in that direction. That's uh, what you would like uh, yes. to see, but what do you think we are going to see? What's your prognosis in the short term and in the medium term? You know, I think because we're going in for a general election, which is so open, right. that I still believe anything can happen. Okay. So I'm still hopeful. I'm not pessimistic. You're not pessimistic no. in the short term. What do you think is going to happen in the medium I'm term? S I'm even less pessimistic in the medium term because I do believe that the Indian economy has a huge potential that we have a potentially large domestic market which we can exploit in different ways if we do go for a wage-led growth, if the politics can actually reorient domestic strategy. I think that we're entering a global phase where it's much more possible to do national development strategies simply because the global economy is in such disarray. Yeah, but I noticed a big if 
yes. in uh, what you said. And I think it's that if that we are going to be watching Absolutely. Uh, yes. in the months yeah. and years to come. Thank you very much. Yeah.